Pro CP Addict here with Brian Rogers of Firewire LEDs. We are going to do an install on my personal truck here of one of his 30 inch light bars with a set of uh, grill brackets. So we've kind of laid out some of the basic tools you need. Some, some things may vary a little bit depending on your personal scenario, but screwdriver for the grill, uh, 532 Allen wrench and a 716 wrench for the hood latch relocation bracket and uh, uh, the bumper brackets along with the wire harness is going to be pretty much plug and play like you said uh, in a previous video. A right angle drill helps for drilling the header panel for the brackets for the light bar, you know, various drill bits and then uh, a form of cutoff wheel. So basically, without I guess further ado, we'll get started on you know, the, the basics of this and, and, and the tear down and sure. we'll go from there. So that's it. Obviously first we're gonna pop the hood. Now don't mind my truck. It's got like 7,000 miles of driving across the country on it. And uh, don't mind my, my worn out grill. This truck is still 100% all original as far as all that goes. So we're gonna take the grill out and get it ready for cutting. There are four screws along the top and then one screw bottom center. This one's actually missing so somebody at one point in time is taking this drill out. So keep up with our screws that way we don't lose them basically and the grill just slides and comes out. Pretty pretty simple. So we've got the grill out, got the bar out, got all of our hardware out and now we're uh, going to take the mounting brackets loosely fit them to the bar so we can get our mounting holes uh, lined up with our sharpie. Uh, a minute ago I told you what tools you needed. I missed that you need one larger Allen wrench. This one's a 730 second for the Allen head for the side of the bar. So the bracket faces out to the front of the truck with the bolt holes to the side so it's easy to access. This will be your passenger side bracket. We're just gonna loosely fit them in. Basically like this, just enough so we can get our holes marked in the grill for where we need to drill to mount this. And this comes to the part when it'll be great to have two people handy, you and buddy, you and your wife, you and your child, whatever. One of you to hold it, one of you to mark it. Now, you can get, if you're working with my dad who's a perfectionist, you can measure this thing 80 times to line it up, but I'm not much of a perfectionist. So, just center it up roughly. Mark your holes. It makes it a little harder on my truck with the ranch hand on it. There's, there's the hole in my mind. Yeah. Perfect. So, basically, when this is all said and done, this will fit right here in the grill on the truck. So what we're gonna do to save time in this video is while we're drilling this and mounting it and running all the wires, we're gonna give this grill to our lovely assistant, Vanna White here. <laughs> He's gonna go trim it out for us and bring back us the finished product. So you and I can, I'm gonna hold it up here one last time. You look back and make sure it looks like it's good and lined up. This should be the center right there. Yep. So, does that, does that look good where it's at? Yep, I like it. It fits tight up against it. There's like a little bit of a groove in there. Yep. It actually fits right up against it. So. Alright. Go ahead and drill the holes. Yep. So 
this can be a little bit difficult this way because of lining the bolts up with the holes. Um, another thing you can do if you want, is you can, for a cleaner look, you can turn the bolts straight up, put the lock, nuts and lock washers on on the other side. Um, I, I don't, I don't do it that way because this is just easier and I like convenience. So again, this is a, with this ranch and it's a little more difficult than if you were just putting it in any other regular vehicle. So we're just going to loosely fit the brackets up so we can get the light bar in and then we'll snug the light bar in, then we'll tighten the brackets up, and then hopefully Vanna White will be back with our grill in just a little bit and we'll put it all into place for you. All right, so this is a 716, so you can do it with a socket and a wrench. Brian was kind enough to supply us with a battery operated impact, which will make it go faster. Got the light bar in here, loosely snugged up. So again, reach in behind, pull back up with your wrench. Eventually I'll find it. One down, lock it up. went through this a little quick um, because it's kind of monotonous and boring. Uh, everything's bolted up, tightened down. This is still a little bit loose, so once we get the grill back, we can adjust it where we need to be, fine tune it, and then we'll tighten it up before we put the grill in. But the wire pigtail is, is uh, stuck out. Just a minute, Brian's gonna show us about that. My truck being pretty much bone stock, it still even has the snorkel on it. A lot of these got thrown away over the years. Mine still has it. We'll need to remove this so we can get to the battery to run the wire, to power everything. So we should take that off now. So typically these were eight millimeters. Somebody at some point in time in this truck's life has changed this out. It's actually a 10 millimeter. Uh, basically just loosen the bolt. I'm gonna slide it out because I'm keeping my snorkel. It's not going anywhere. Pop the snorkel off, take it out of the way. Now it's removed so we can get to everything. And then, like Brian said earlier in the product review video, his stuff comes with everything you need. Uh, we're gonna kinda turn the video over to him and he is gonna go through the install process of all the wiring, hooking it up, powering it, and all that, so Brian. All right, so ours has a switch on it. Uh, you need to remove that just to get the wire through the firewall. Um, have a plan on where you're gonna put the switch if you already have a switch. I'm pretty sure you already have a switch in there. Yeah. Um, so we'll just pull this off. We'll unwrap this and figure out the best way to route our wires. Typically on OBS trucks, guys, there's a um, there's a port right at the firewall at the brake booster that a lot of people run wires through. Uh, Brian, obviously, is a professional. He'll find a great place. Just throwing out my two cents of where typically people run wires. Okay, as you see, it has a relay built into it, um, and then a power, a ground. There is an inline fuse already in the harness. So, let's move all that out of the way. So literally everything. Everything is there. There's no way to screw it up and burn something down. Typically not. <laughs> so, we'll figure out the best way to get to the light. Um, typically, it's right here behind the headlight. Uh, real easy on these trucks. Fish it right through and plug it in. Push it back out of the way. It's that easy. See guys, this is why you own OBS trucks. They're easy to work on. They are, true. So now typically what we would do, instead of cutting this all the way off, just bunch it back up, stick it back in here by the battery. We'll zip tie it all up nice and tight later after all the connections are made. Well, that's, that's a good point to be made there because I've seen people cut stuff before they're finished with an install and they need this much extra. Yep. So for us at, at our shop, even though there would be quote unquote miles of extra wire left over, we would still just zip tie it up and out of the way because you never know like if you're ever gonna move this someplace yep. else, 
Or that's another thing too, your warranty is not gonna cover it if somebody has cut and spliced the wire harness, correct? We do get that question quite a bit um, on some of our other products too. If, hey, if we cut this off and, and hardwire it, is that gonna avoid the warranty? Yes, it is. Those are on there for a reason. Well, and, and like you said, it comes with the relay built in and the fuse built in. You get too much voltage, you could mess up the light. If you don't get a wire correct or you get a bare spot, you could wind up burning your truck down. Yep, absolutely. And, and that's why you pre-assemble it the way it is and why you have so much extra wires. That way you can basically put it anywhere. Sure, so. absolutely. Um, this battery is actually fairly clean, not corrosion all over it like some of the older vehicles that we see. So that'll make uh, connecting everything easy. All right, so we're gonna leave these disconnected from the battery because we have the plug removed. It's a good idea to leave the, the disconnected from the battery. So when you're running this through the firewall, you're not gonna short anything out, pop your fuse, anything uh, crazy. So, okay, so now we're gonna look underneath the dash and see where we can actually get the wire through. Um, flashlight, a little wire pull tool. So guys, this is a, uh... This is the point when it's great to have two people because I'm going to be able to feed the wire through on the back side of the firewall over here. Uh, Brian is going to be inside the cab and he's going to be able to get the wire and then we can fish it through slowly so there's no nicks or chafes or anything or kinks in the wire or it gets caught up around something. I can watch the outside, he can watch the inside. It's fed properly, it's not wrapped around your steering shaft, things like that. So take all the fun out of it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? This, this makes a, a, a two hour job, a 15 minute job. On this particular truck, somebody at one time has run wires on it already. So there's a hole in the, the boot on the steering column. It's usually a pretty good place. If you've got an automatic truck, there is a cover plate where the, the cab is preformed for five speed trucks. A lot of people take that cover plate off, drill a hole in it, put a rubber grommet in it, and that's another great place to go through. If you've got a manual truck, next to that is a, is a rubber grommet in the firewall. You can pop out and go through that hole in manual trucks. Um, this one just for, for simplicity and so we don't have to drill and take the truck apart any further. It's already got a hole through the rubber boot. We're just gonna reuse that and we're gonna go through there. So ready? I'm, re I'm ready to feed it through when you are. So I'm gonna go under the master cylinder with it. So the wire is not flipped up and in the way. And I should be through the hole, Brian. All right, so he's running the wire through. Let's go down here and see if we can find it. So it's right here by the steering shaft. Just make sure you pull it all the way through and we'll secure it out of the way of the steering shaft so it never gets in the way. Okay, so now we can just run it right up here to one of the switches and plug it in. And then we'll go back underneath the hood and connect the battery. All right, so his truck already has switches right here. We're gonna pop one out and just repurpose the switch. Okay, so we're gonna reuse the switch here. Make sure you run your wire through the hole before connecting the switch. So on this switch, it's actually labeled positive, light, and then ground. So on your harness, your red is your positive, your black is your ground, and your blue goes to your light. Now, we understand that a lot of people already have switches or upfitter switches or whatever. If you need to cut this plug off, that's not going to void your warranty. Just make sure you wire it back up the way it's supposed to be done. Now let's go hook it up to the battery and go from there. So Vanna White is now back with our, our cutout grill. Um, as you can see, he trimmed out quite a bit. You can choose how much you want. You can be more precise than this. We just went ahead and cut out a large portion so it would just be easy to go. Obviously, as you can tell from this grill, it is not a very pretty grill. So when we get back home, we're gonna refine it on one of our brand new grills. So basically you just rotate the grill back into place, make sure the feet are sitting in their, their pockets like they're supposed to. Take me just a minute, I'm sure. And there, back in place. Put your screws in. So we were missing a screw a while ago for the bottom center section of the grill. People do all kinds of stuff with them. There's a bunch of random holes in the course support up here. And I notice a lot of times people sticking screws in the holes. So I found the actual fifth screw. And we're actually gonna put it back in like it's supposed to be. All right, that's back in. Now we'll just snug down these screws here. So 
Ta-da, real pilot back in the truck. So I missed a tool a while ago. We need a half inch wrench for the battery bolts um, to loosen them up and get them on. If you look on our site, we also have battery bolts that go on the factory uh, setups that have an extra length on them. Nice. With an extra nut on the end for this specific thing for yep. tire for tire and yeah, if this bolt's a little short it's gonna be a little tight but we'll make it work all right also another tip that i would interject is if your batteries are very corroded right now would be an opportune time to take them off clean them and put them back together so you get a, a really good connection on your battery absolutely so all we're gonna do is take the nuts off put the wires on and tighten them back up. We're gonna do the power first, always do the ground last. Tighten that back up. Make sure you don't over tighten these. These are lead connectors, so they're easy to break. But make sure you get them all the way tight. Okay, now those are tight. Let's test it just to make sure it's gonna work. Hmm. Here we go. Yeah, that should blind everybody. All right, so Brian has tucked all the wires away, got some zip ties on them so they stay uh, nice and neat. We, we run all the wires where so they're nice and, and hidden, best as possible in this scenario. So basically we're done other than putting the snorkel back on, correct? Yep, we're done. So, and install complete. Light bar in, functions properly, wires tucked away nice. There's no real invasive, procedures on the truck other yep. than mounting your switch wherever you decide. Obviously mine, we used a, a switch that was already yep. in the truck. Made it so, a little bit easier. Yeah, and the, the the worst case scenario is is on this is cutting out the grill for the light bar to fit in the grill. You decide you don't like it there. A new grill is not very expensive and that your truck's not full up after that. And it's we're not cutting on the outside of the grill either. So right. it's all behind the scenes kind of kind of stuff. And, so. and we're also not cutting the, the core support either, so there's no problem with it cracking or busting or breaking or anything like that, so. Yeah, all in all, I'd say it's pretty good. Yeah, so I'd, I'd rate this a 10 out of 10. Yeah, there you go. So, as always guys, if you like our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have a product you want us to review, a product you want us to install, or a truck you would like to see uh, put on, on display, feel free to give us a, a line at info at or leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks.